What's up guys, Perez here. Today I'm going to show you guys how to do typography in your edits. I know I did a typo tutorial before, but um, this is more, this is a more advanced tutorial, better than the other one. So, yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. So, what you're going to do is just go ahead and get what you want in the typo. So, let's add new solid doesn't matter what color and I'm gonna add some particles particular you can use other particle system uh, particle plugin systems whatever but I prefer uh, I prefer particular from Charco so with particular you want to move it a little bit out like that and what you need to do is just go ahead and control shift D and cut the layer, or split the layer and then cut the bottom layer. And what you need to do is go click, click on solid. I mean, yeah, click on solid and then go to emitter, master. Change this from point to box. And then it'll open the image size. This. Then change it from XYZ link to XYZ individual. If you if it's already if it already look like this, then you don't have to do that. But if it doesn't, just go ahead and change that. And then make the image size an X over a thousand, maybe. Image size in Y over a thousand. And what you definitely want to like make expand the emitter size in Z just to get the 3D look. So maybe right there, and maybe like split up the emitter size and Y. I mean, X can see that looks better. All right, so with um, with particular, you can go in, change the emitter set. Let's let's go to particles. And let's change the color random. You could change it to like multiple colors at a time if you want. Like I did here, so we add that. I hope you won't be able to see it. Okay. And then if it's small, you can change the the size to nine maybe. And then the size random. All the way up to hundred. So also the opacity random. What you want to do now is close this up. Add some type of glow. So I like to add sapphire when it comes to these things. So S glow. And then change the glow with. Like that. Alright. So what you want to do now is find you maybe an image or anything or any type of text so let me get an image and I'm gonna put a text in there too so maybe or no we can get this one All right, and then we can make this 3D, and let's bring it down here. Or before you do that, so let's uncheck the box for 3D. Do new camera. Okay. Bring this up. Now make it 3D. Grab it. Go to the blue one and just bring it up a little bit and then move it to the side a little bit. Alright, so what you want to do with well, when it comes to camera, you want to add nulls to add the extra movement. So if you add a nul, you want to add you want to keep adding nul on top of nul just to you know just to keep it keep the flow going. 
So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go up to the camera, right click in this area here and do new control, I mean new, new object. And then what we're gonna do is parent this camera to the new. So this little squiggly thingy right here, bring it over here. And make sure that it is on the new because sometimes it can go like this. You might do it like that and then it, that shows up. You know I mean? And then make the new object 3D as well. And this just controls the camera. So make sure you know where you're going, which way everything goes. And as you can see, it looks like more, it looks 3D, you know what I mean? So let's bring this new object back. So let's do Ctrl Z. And you just want to make sure that it looks 3D. Make sure that everything is perfect. So click on camera, go up to your, go up here to your camera tool, hold it, go to orbit camera tool, or just keep pressing C until you get it. And then just turn it a little bit just to make sure like there's particles in the back of this just so you know that it is 3d because sometimes it does mess up all right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the new object open up press P to open up the position and we're gonna reset it now what you want to do is add your text so if I add anything so let me see let me go to text and the current font I'm using is 80SC if you guys are wondering so if you think the font is you know if you guys like the font then you can go ahead and get it um what I'm gonna add I'm just gonna add my watermark basically we're gonna bring it up here what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into text at scale at position then go to animator selector expression click the stopwatches on the scale and position change the scale to zero change was just change the position like however you want it so I might bring this down and then bring this to the side by a lot and then we'll go maybe a little further out and then like right here and then we'll just reset everything so just select it all like this and right click on it and reset so now what you want to do is select all of the keyframes right click keyframe assist easy ease and then you want to go to graph editor and do your graphing. I like to just bring it all the way at the one side that's closest to the end, just like this way, just to make it go faster. Then you want to enable motion blur and add motion blur to your text. And then this is what you should get. So you get the text expressions in here. Now what you want to do is make it 3D, and you want to bring it under the camera. Now we're gonna do the movement. So what you want to do is click on the stopwatch here. Go a few frames over. So like if you're doing it in a song, whatever, wherever the lyric is, go ahead and do it to sync it up. Move it this way. Add motion blur to everything. So this and this. You can do it to the null too, but it doesn't make you know you don't have to. Bring it like that. And right click. Keyframe says easy ease. What I like to do, it's like when it starts off, I like to. Go in the graph editor, click on it, and I actually bring it so it can start off fast and then it can go slow when it comes to the end. 
So bring it like that. That down to C. So you'll get that and now we want to make it like let's say we just want to make it move more and what we do with that is we add another new so right click new new object make it 3d and parent this new on top of this one now, click uh, press P on your gear, press P on your keyboard and Click on a stopwatch. Bring this a little, not a little, but a little over the this keyframe at the end for this new. And then what we can do is we want to actually go back a little, and instead of position, go to rotation. Do Z rotation. Then for this one, go a little over the keyframe for the last null it's like I woke up from a nightmare so be right here and do a 180 degree spin this is just to make it orbit a little bit So as you can see, it goes really good in this. Then select the keyframes, right click on one of the keyframes, keyframe assist, easies, go into your graph editor, click on it. What you want to do now is bring it to the to this side so it can start off slow and then go fast at the end. And we do this because we are we are overlapping keyframes and we don't want it to go fast when it's already doing like when it's in an, another movement. So we can just preview it real quick. And the outcome is usually smooth depends on how you do the graph. Alright, so we're just gonna go ahead and play through. And since it like that, when it ends, like you can see the text at the end, we we do want to add a position. So I guess we can go r back to this keyframe right here. Press P on your keyboard. Click on the stopwatch then click U so you can see all the U, the keyframes that you made go right here to the end of the movement the rotation and bring it down right here this is the X axis so just bring it down and depending on how you move it you might want to go because mine goes to negative but yours might go to positive or anything. So just bring it down and then do the same keyframe, do the same graphing for it. So keyframe assist, uh, easy, goodness, and then make it go like that. And then let's preview it.
out And that wherever you may be I hope you never found I know it's taking a while, but let's just see it just to make sure that we're doing it. We're on the right track. Alright, let's preview it. I'll have, since the preview is kind of slow and jagged, I'll add the render like when it's finished in the. It, before the clip starts, so like in the beginning of the video. So it does give you rotation and it does bring it down where you can't see the text right here. Maybe you want to add a little bit. Nah, it's good. So now what we want to do is focus more on the background. We don't want to keep it, you know, just this. We don't want to keep it plain. So let's add a new solid. Doesn't matter what color. Go into your effects and controls. Right click in this area and add video copilot optical flares. If you don't have this, I highly recommend you getting it. Click on options, that's right next to the reset button. Or set option in there. And just let it load up. Alright, so now what you're gonna do is Go into one of these presets, they give a lot of good presets for you to be able to use. So let's say I would do maybe 50 mm prime or 50 millimeter prime. And we can change the color to whatever you want. So go to gold color. If you want it red or purple, blue, green, yellow. Let's try purple. And since this isn't like it didn't change the purple at all, we're going to go to glow. You just want to customize the color for each one of these layers just to get the right color that you want. And then we're going to go to iris to change the color too because it is a dark color. Click OK. Change the render mode from on black to on transparent. I change it from 2D, so the source type from 2D to 3D. Bring it up to right here. And you want to make sure that the layer is on top of every, you want to make sure that the layer is on top of all the other layers just to make sure that it, you know, just so the light can interact with the other layers. So now what you're going to do, because I know this part, wherever the text came up, it looks a little like right here in this area where the girl is where yeah where the girl is you want to add some uh drop shadow so go to your text layer and add drop shadow i like to use sapphire drop shadow all right so just change the shadow blur amount and let's redo it. Alright, so you can see that the auto player does interact with the, the layer. And the, the parts are going good. So, that's basically it for this tutorial. There's nothing special about it. It's not that hard. Once you get used to it, you'll, you'll know what you're doing. So, uh, thank you guys for coming to this tutorial. Hope you guys have a nice day and goodbye.